Well, welcome back. We like to periodically update you by talking with our county executive, Steve Shu. Thank you for joining us again on the show. Thank you for having me. Very good. Let's let's get the the first thing out of the way here, which is uh, we were happy to show on on our program last week you doing the polar bear plunge. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know you do it every year. Now yeah. you you chose to do some body paint this year. Yeah, whose idea was yeah, the body paint? This, this year we kind of stepped out, stepped out of our comfort zone and, and <laughs> did the body paint, but uh, I hedged my bets. I had navy on the front and army in the back. Right. So uh, for the United States Naval Academy and for our wonderful army base mm -hmm. out at Fort Meade. And uh, it was cold. It was yeah. really, it was very cold. Really cold. But you missed that snow, luckily, so. We missed the snow. There were yeah. a little, there were some snow flurries before jumping in, but uh, they'd stopped. And yeah. the, sun, the sun was poking out a little bit, but it was really much colder than last year. Now, cool. and, and now, every time I ask you about this, you say, you know, it wasn't that bad. But I'm told that when you hit that, whatever part of your body hits that water, it instantly kind of burns. And then when you go under, yeah. it shut, everything shuts down because it's so cold. That's about right. Okay. That's about right. Now, last year, I, I, my recollection of it was that the water was actually a little warmer feeling uh -huh. than, the, than the air, uh -huh. the ambient air. But... This year, not so much. This year, when I got in that water, it was like sticking your hand in a nice cold bucket, and it was really, really cold. But I kept telling myself it's a really good cause, and it is. I was, it is. I was out on Friday, mm -hmm. which is uh, Public Safety and U.S. Military Recognition Day. The, the official polar bear plunges on Saturday that benefits right. the Special same Olympics. Same location, though, on Same Friday. location, same sort of event. Uh, both events do benefit the Special Olympics, but Friday is all about uh, police, fire, sheriff, state's attorney, pro and probation, detention, uh, as well as all branches of the United States Armed Forces. So it's a, a, a large number of public safety and military personnel. They come out uh, in mass to support the Special Olympics, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. It's really great. Now, was it your idea to do the body paint, or was this something something someone it's suggested? It's one of those things. I I came out with the idea, and then I wish I could have pulled it back. <laughs> so you're not going to be doing but, this next year? Uh, not likely. <laughs> Participating, <laughs> not painting. The coldness. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You never know. We'll see. I'm sure we'll you got see. a good amount of chuckles that day. It got a little a lot of attention. attention. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. It added, added to the fun, but it added to the cold. Well, you were a good sport. We appreciate it. People enjoyed it. it. Yeah. Um, so tell, let's, talk, let's talk about work a little bit. Um, last week, you made an announcement about some fee reductions. Um, can yes. you tell us about that and how that fits into your larger program of what you want to do in office? Well, you, you are very aware of our five-point plan, the first component of which is reducing taxes and fees on Anne Arundel County citizens to make it easier to live and work here and to create jobs here. Uh, last year, we were successful in enacting the largest tax cut in, in county history. This year, we've been focusing our attention on fees. And uh, about two weeks ago, the county council approved our proposal to reduce uh, the fees associated with connecting to public water and sewer. Right. Those fees are enormous in this county, among the largest such fees in the United States. And the fee cut we enacted is uh, in the aggregate $125 million over the next three years that we will be pumping directly into the economy and creating jobs and economic activity. So I am, I am really excited about that. I actually believe it's the most significant achievement of our administration so far. But it's only just the beginning as far as fees go. We're, we're now halfway through the process of evaluating, evaluating the hundreds of fees in Anne Arundel County. Uh, we are rationalizing them, sorting them out. We're going to be rebasing some, eliminating others entirely. And last week we did announce uh, the elimination of the spay-neuter fee mm -hmm. entirely. We want to encourage people to spay and neuter their, their pets, and we don't want a fee standing in the way of that important practice. Uh, we reduced the fees for the uh, senior, senior, uh, plus. senior plus program at our senior centers to make it easier for seniors to participate in those programs and they're really very important uh, and other fees as well. So we, we're, we're just in the middle of this overall process but so far so good. We've found a lot of fees to reduce and eliminate and you know what most of them are just nuisances. Mm -hmm. They're not even large enough to have an impact on the financial 
uh, results and, and sustainability of the county. They're just, okay. they're nickel and dime fees. And we're just, we're just getting out of the business of nickel and diming the citizens of the county. That's what we're trying to do. I think that's an audit we can all get behind. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, that's, I was gonna ask you about that because whenever, whenever you cut a fee or a tax, which you've been doing, you get this response from folks that says, well, what are you, what are we sacrificing for that? And um, it's important to know that when you're looking at, when you're reviewing these fees, you're looking at, well, is the fee paying for the service? Um, exactly. What is the utility of the fee? So um, on these particular ones, you made a judgment that it wasn't covering the cost. And so if it's not covering the cost, why are we charging? Why it? have it? Yeah. Exactly. And, um, it's important that that fees uh, cover all or a material portion of the program that they are supposed to be paying for, but no more. Mm -hmm. What we don't want to have is situations where we're overcharging people, which is exactly what we were doing with water and sewer hookup fees. Oh, okay. We were charging more than was necessary, and that's not appropriate. Fees should not be a source of general revenue to a government. Mm -hmm. They should only support their specific programs, and we have instances where that's not the case, and we're going to fix it. Very good. Well, another hot topic that you've had on your plate has been Crofton High School. So yes. what can you tell us the latest on that? Very exciting. As, as I think you both know, Anne Arundel County has not constructed an incrementally new high school in Anne Arundel, in the county since 1982, which is why the schools have spiraled ever upward in terms of, of total student population and we now have among the largest high schools in the United States. And what does incremental mean? Well, we've replaced schools. For example, oh, okay. we've replaced, we're replacing Severna Park. Adding a new school. We haven't added any more than the 12 we've always had. We've okay. had 12 schools since 1982. We've replaced some along the way, but we've never added that 13th, 14th, or 15th high school. Well, the good news is that we have now added to our long range plan, not one, two, but three new high schools over the next 10 years. They will be smaller neighborhood high schools, which I think is important because smaller neighborhood schools are the places where students learn best. And the first of those three schools will be Crofton. And we, were, we will be uh, entering the planning phases this summer. Uh, very excited about the project. It's gonna be uh, a game changer for the West County community, not just Crofton because, and for South County because half the kids from Crofton now go to South River and are overcrowding South River. Those kids will all come back to Crofton. Yeah. The other half of the, of the Crofton community goes to Arundel, mm -hmm. overcrowding Arundel. Those kids will stay in Crofton. So both, so three all birds three with schools, one stone. <laughs> and there may be even collateral effects beyond those three schools. We may, be, we may see some people from Old, Old Mill, Mill, you know, redistricted, who knows, to, uh, to, to make these schools all balance out in terms of population, but the net effect is gonna be a significant reduction in the overall size of all of those schools. And research proves that the smaller size a school is, the better the academic outcomes and the more after-school opportunities each child has. Because whether it's a 2,000 person school or a 1,000 person school, there's still only one marching band, there's still only one football team. It's just when schools get really large, there's that many more kids going home uh, with nothing to do because they get cut. It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. The extracurricular opportunities, the student to teacher attention ratio. Right. right. But also with uh, the nightmare that has become transportation. South River graduate, by the way, right That's here. That's right. Go oh, Seahawks. Um, but with the <laughs> bus routes, I mean, just wreaking a lot of uh, havoc on the roads back and forth. Um, we'll have some improvements there as well because right, right. now you're busing those kids in and they're having a ridiculous commute. So and a long day for the kids. Yeah. And I think just to update people because we've been trying to keep them apprised as every step along along the way, uh, you, you presented before the Board of Public Works to, for funding for the school. Right. And you also uh, forward funded aspects of that. Um, tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, construction of, of schools in Maryland is a joint county and state responsibility. Right. The county pays for about 60% of the cost of building a new school and the state pays for about 40%. So every year we need to go before the state, present our plan and get their uh, approval to participate up to the tune of their 40%. 
and that was the event at the Department of Public Works that you're talking about. That went well. I think the uh, governor, the controller, and the treasurer, uh, which are the members of, of the Board of Public Works, are supportive of what we're doing in this county. So I think the state will be there for us. And uh, the next step is, uh, is, is planning, planning and design. And uh, we'll be doing that in earnest this, uh, this summer. Great. Awesome. Well, so not as not quite as exciting as uh, Crofton High School. Which, but by the way, did we ever figure out who the mascot's going to be? Well, I think we we said Cardinal, Cardinals. right? Or Crofton Cardinal Cardinals. or Cardinal. That's the traditional. Yeah. I I personally want it to be Crofton Kraken. Yeah, no one's going to do Kraken, that. The Kraken, like I'm the sorry. big monster. No. I'm not sure that's going to cut yeah. it, Dave. I yeah. think it's kind of cool. With him. <laughs> Which one did you have? I said Cardinal. Oh no, I said Crows. I just said Crows. a bird. Crows. So that was the first, the first bird well, I thought of. Cardinals is an old name for Crofton teams. That's been uh, around a long time. So yeah. that might That's make probably it probably gonna There'll probably be a contest. Maybe maybe you guys ought to have a contest. We should enter. We love contests. No Kraken though. We love contests. <laughs> well, anyway, as I said, not as exciting as Crofton High School and what to name the mascot, but but very important is this reform effort when it comes to procurement in the county. Um, that's the next big thing you're taking on. Tell us yes. a little bit about that issue and, well, and how we're going to attack it. This is part of our overall government reform effort. And there's nothing sexy about government reform or reorganizing bureaucracies, but it's really, really important because mm -hmm. the county spends vast amounts of money uh, procuring or buying goods and services. Actually, we spent last year about $360 million buying various goods and services. It's imperative that that process be efficient and uh, respectful of taxpayer dollars, but right now it's not. It's very inefficient, very slow, very backward. There's no technology. Uh, we just completed a major consulting study that suggests that we are leaving 18 to $20 million on the table each and every year. Hmm. $20 million going down the tubes because of inefficiencies in our in our purchasing practices. So we are going after that really hard. And the other is permitting. We just completed the other study and uh, that study showed what I've believed for some time, which is that we have the potential through reform to reduce permitting times in half. And oh, wow. everybody knows in business that time is money. If you can sure. reduce your permitting times from two years to one year, that's a game changer for, for new home construction, for projects, for rehabilitating old homes, uh, building a deck, whatever you're trying to do. Getting the business open and the That's jobs right. going. Get the business yeah. open, get the people employed, get business happening, and help grow our economy. So everybody wins through permit reform and accelerating the permit process. So I'm very excited about it. Maybe I'm the only one, but I think it's. Really, I think there's a lot of ears out there that want to hear that. <laughs> I think it's really important. It's really, it's one of those very important, but behind the scenes things that we're working on that will make a big difference in the long run for this county. One of the things I've seen, one of the little anecdotes that I I tell about what you're talking about is this this process we have of it's like a red weld, which is like a lawyer's uh, folder, and it has this sign signing sheet on it that's stapled on it, right. and it has to get all these signatures and it's hand carried right. from this office to that office to this office right. and just the process of moving the thing mm -hmm. takes forever. I mean, we have online signatures now. Exactly. We have electronic signatures. Now, in, in other jurisdictions around the country, that process is automated. It's, on, it's all computerized. They're, in our county, we require applicants for permits to bring in rolls upon rolls of printed Permits, big architectural, excuse me, architectural plans, not permits, big roles. Yeah. And like really big. That's roles the dark like ages. Yeah. yeah. That's the dark ages. All those plans should be submitted by computer. And all the parties that need to sign off, planning and zoning, inspections and permits, the fire department, the health department, they should all be reviewing these plans online and signing off electronically. I agree. Well, it's a, that's a lot to, to tackle, but you know, I guess we're we're in it for the long haul to try and try and take these things, take care of these things one at a time. We're in it for the long haul. These things will the... take a year or two, but we'll get them done. Well, as always, we appreciate you coming on and updating us as to everything that's going on in county government, and um, we're going to take a really quick break, and we'll be right back.